All right. Next is coronary circulation. Number one most requested things at, thing at office hours was, can you please go over coronary circulation again? Can you go over coronary circulation again? So I'm going to make sure I go over coronary circulation again. Okay. We're going to do this in two ways. Actually, maybe three ways. One, I'm going to draw everything on these two outlines. Then I'm going to draw the flow on this. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to redraw it on these pictures. I hope I can get that all done in one video. Okay, I hope so anyway. So you want to remember, you want to recall, this is the aorta. How do I know? Well, it's got those three branches. And also remember, that's my apex. So my apex is going to be my left ventricle right there. And this is going to signal where my right ventricle is. And then this is my right atrium. And then that represents my left atrium. Okay. And again, we can go over to the other picture. The other picture is the posterior side. This is going to represent my left ventricle. This is my left atrium. This is my right atrium. And this is my right ventricle, roughly right about there. Okay. So the thing you want to, to un know and understand is that there's going to be two circuits of the heart. One is the pulmonary circuit and one is the systemic circuit. The pulmonary circuit is on the left side. I'm sorry, the pulmonary circuit's on the right side. The systemic circuit is on the left side. The left side of the heart is basically going to make sure that your body gets a supply of oxygen. The very first organ that is going to get that supply is the heart itself. Why? Because it's the shortest circulation, because basically blood's gonna flow into the aorta from the left ventricle. And when it does, it's going to come out of arteries that are coming right off of the aorta. So coming right off of the aorta, we're going to see that there's an artery that's going to go underneath the right atrium. So between the right atrium and the right ventricle, and it's going to wrap posterior. It's going to come all the way posterior like this. And it's going to become another blood vessel that's going to go between the right ventricle and the left ventricle in the posterior interventricular sulcus, okay? This artery is called the right coronary artery. The right coronary artery supplies the entire right side of the heart. So if you wanna color code this, like maybe color code this all pink, the right atrium, the right ventricle on the front side is supplied by the right coronary artery, as well as the back side of the right atrium. And then this is also right coronary artery here. It's just then gonna branch downwards. And when it branches downwards, this is gonna become the posterior interventricular artery right there. Uh, sorry. My handwriting kind of really got crazy. I'll try to rewrite it again. Okay. So because the right coronary artery supplies to the posterior interventricular artery, that's why the right coronary artery supplies the entire right side of the heart. The posterior interventricular artery is specifically is specifically supplying to the posterior side of the right ventricle. Remember, this is to the myocardium itself, to the muscle layer that needs the oxygen in order to contract. And then it's gonna be hard, this, this, this one's gonna be a little bit more difficult, like I might have to come in here and uh, erase some of my lines right here. So what I'm gonna erase is this is the pulmonary trunk, okay? I have to erase part of the pulmonary trunk. Oh, I can't find my pen because the aorta is back behind the pulmonary trunk. So I want you to think about like, okay, I cut that off. The left coronary artery is gonna come off of the aorta like this, go back behind the pulmonary trunk and it will also be underneath the oracle or this little ear-like flap of the left uh, atrium, okay? 
And then what's going to happen is it is going to branch like that and go towards the back surface of the heart, towards the left posterior side of the heart, running basically like that. The other branch is going to start to come forward in the anterior interventricular sulcus, just like that. Okay, so this is the left coronary artery. Uh, I'll abbreviate. The left coronary artery is actually going to be almost impossible for you to find. Especially in models in class, you'll have to take the front off and you have to you have to find where the oracle is. So it's not always easy to find the left coronary artery. Sometimes on pictures, they will label it like right there because that's where it ends and where the branches begin, okay? So this one that's gonna go backwards is called the circumflex artery. So again, that's circumflex artery. And then the one that's coming forward, this is anterior interventricular. Okay, so what is this applying? So the left coronary artery supplies the entire left side of the heart, the left atrium, the left ventricle on the anterior and the posterior sides. If you really, really, really wanna get technical here, I'm going to draw, I'm going to shade this and then I'm going to erase it for you, okay? The anterior interventricular artery is going to supply to the anterior portion of the left ventricle, like kind of just that area itself. Whereas the circumflex, the circumflex is going to supply to the left ventricle on the posterior side and also all of the left atrium on the posterior and the anterior side. So one of the things I forgot to tell you in the other videos is you should notice that the left atrium and the left ventricle are primarily on the posterior side of the heart, whereas the right atrium and the right ventricle are primarily on the anterior side of the heart, okay? So that's why you have to have two blood vessels because, well, one, you have to have two blood vessels for the left. Really, it's kind of three, but because the left ventricle is supplying so much, I'm sorry, the left ventricle is contracting more because it's sending blood to the body, it has a thicker myocardial layer, you need a bigger blood supply, okay? You know, I'm gonna leave my shading there. The right coronary artery is all in white, okay? So that's how you're gonna get blood flow to the myocardial layer. So if you want to do this part of the coronary circulation, and then we'll go back over that, the, uh, the vein system is, here is my aorta, okay? This is my aortic valve. Essentially, coming off of the aorta, we're gonna see that there's a blood vessel coming underneath the right atrium that's gonna go all the way to the back like that to supply. So this is right coronary artery. And then it's going to branch and become the posterior interventricular artery. Okay, and then on the left side, I don't have a whole lot of room, but the left side's gonna be kind of short. So this is left coronary artery. And then left coronary artery goes forward and then it's gonna wrap posterior. The posterior portion is circumflex artery. And the one that comes forward is anterior interventricular artery. Okay, so that's how it's supplying. Like this is that nice map that I had in my PowerPoint, but I'm gonna make the map more accurate, okay? So then you have to understand that Oxygen got sent to the myocardium. Now we have to pick up carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide is gonna be picked up in the vein system. 
So that means most of the arteries will have a parallel vein. There will be some that don't have a parallel vein, okay? So let's say, how do we drain the right side, okay? So the right side, on um, the right anterior side is going to be drained by a vein that's gonna run parallel here to right coronary artery, and then it's gonna come backwards right here and basically it drains into this, there's gonna be a big blue blood vessel right here, okay? That big blue blood vessel right there is the coronary sinus. So this one that's running parallel to right coronary artery right here, this is called small, small cardiac vein. Okay, so again, small cardiac vein. And then you're gonna have one that runs parallel to posterior interventricular artery, and it's going to also drain into the coronary sinus. That one is called middle cardiac vein. Okay. So how you're draining the anterior side of the right atrium and the right ventricle is the small cardiac vein and how you're draining the posterior side of the right ventricle is going to be the middle cardiac vein. So in this case here, I might want to color code this a little bit and be like, okay, so the purple co corresponds with middle cardiac vein right there. Whereas you can do like, I don't know, if you want to, you could do like light blue. Light blue is going to correspond to the small cardiac vein drainage. So here there's a slight difference in, in the drainage, okay? Because there's two things that are going to be draining the right side. Whereas on the left side, we're gonna have one, one large vein that's gonna run parallel to anterior interventricular artery and then start to merge backwards. And when it merges backwards, it actually becomes part of or is continuous with coronary sinus. This is great cardiac vein. So technically the great cardiac vein is draining all the left side. So this is great cardiac vein. So that's why I don't need to color code the left side because the whole left side is drained by one large vein and that's the great cardiac vein, okay? Down here all the way at the bottom, it is called anterior interventricular vein, if you're really curious, but like all that part up there is great cardiac vein, okay? So it means all these veins have to drain into the coronary sinus, and then the coronary sinus is actually draining into the right atrium just above inferior vena cava, and that's what this hole is. This is superior vena cava, and that's inferior vena cava. So I'm going to come back to my drawing here, and I'm going to show you where the par parallels are going to be. So we're going to see that small cardiac vein is running parallel to right. Oh, that. That went out of control there, sorry. So small cardiac vein is gonna run parallel to right coronary artery and it's going to drain right there into coronary sinus. Okay, so you see how coronary sinus is underneath the left atrium on the posterior side. Then we're gonna see that middle cardiac vein It's going to run parallel to posterior interventricular artery and drain into the coronary sinus. Then we're going to see that our great cardiac vein is running parallel to anterior interventricular and circumflex and draining into our coronary sinus. And then coronary sinus will have an opening here that's draining into the right atrium, okay? What that also means is you have to come back to your chart here and put and coronary sinus. 
on that chart. When you do blood flow, I'll actually do all the blood vessels in this case, okay? <clears throat> so if you want to, you guys should try to label these, but I'll, I'll label, I'll try to label them really quickly right now with some abbreviations, but, or not. So there's that one, there's that one. You see how there's not a left coronary artery? Left coronary artery is back behind the left oracle right there. So this is right coronary artery. That would be left coronary artery. <clears throat> this is circumflex artery. This is anterior. I'm just going to put interventric artery. And then back here, so there's right coronary artery again. This is posterior interventricular right there. And then if you do the veins on the back, let's just put coronary, coronary sinus. Sorry, it's not as big as I thought it would be. And then we see, oh, that one, and that one is great cardiac vein. And then this one is middle cardiac vein. And this one is small cardiac vein. Okay. And there's a little piece right there that's also small cardiac vein. I'm just, just going to abbreviate that one so that you can see. So that's all the coronary sign, uh, coronary circulation. Okay. And this is anatomy of the heart. So make sure you understand what um, parts of the heart get supplied by each artery, what part of the heart gets drained, especially the supply is really important because we talked about, you know, bypass surgery. And if there's a blockage here, you know, if you have a nice big blockage here, you have a blockage here or here or here, it's going to mean different things for the person that has that blockage. Like what part of the muscle is not getting blood? <coughs> Excuse me. And what that means in terms of like heart attack. Okay. So think about that. 